Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, an overview of test methods used to determine DK and DF for high-frequency circuit materials. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation and I am a technical marketing manager. Today I'm going to be talking about test methods and the test methods used to determine DK and DF for microwave and millimeter wave applications. Now there are a lot of uh, test methods that can be used out there and each test method has its own set of capabilities and limits or pros and cons and that's just the nature of these test methods. And uh, in some cases, you would not want to compare data from one test method to, an, to another, and in other cases, it's okay. And that's some of what this video is going to be talking about today. Now, I'm just going to be touching on the subject lightly, and if you want more information, then I would refer you to our Rogers Technology Support Hub website, and at the end of this video, you will find a URL there to go to that website. Shown here is a curve uh, from a material science text, basically, and it's showing the dielectric constant versus frequency over a very wide band, and also epsilon double uh, prime is related to losses. But the point here is dielectric constant, or DK, is actually a constant at lower frequencies. So when you change frequencies from low to higher frequency, if you're in the range of the lower frequencies, then it really is a constant. The dielectric constant doesn't change. But once you get in the range of frequencies where we typically work at for RF applications, then that's when you're on the slope there where the dielectric constant will slightly decrease with an increase in frequency. And this is called dielectric dispersion. And this is definitely a normal event that happens with any dielectric material when electric fields are applied to it. Shown here is information regarding anisotropy, and it's very common for materials used in the printed circuit board industry to have anisotropy, and that basically means that the DK is not the same on the X, Y, and Z axes of the material. Typically, the X axis and Y axis are assumed to be equal for dielectric constant, and that's generally true. However, the Z axis, which is the thickness axis of the material, that usually is a different dielectric constant value than the XY plane. So for software, it's normally reported as anisotropy anyway. The DK is normally reported as XY plane versus the DK in the Z axis. Now the anisotropy is more impactful on coupled features. So if it is a microstrip transmission line, single-ended line, then anisotropy really doesn't matter much. But here in the pictures I'm showing coupled features for a microstrip. And you can see there's two different modes of operation, even mode, odd mode. In even mode, the fields, the red lines, that's using the z-axis dielectric constant. And the odd mode, you can see that the red lines are also using the z-axis, but there are some coupling fields between the two signal traces. And there you're picking up the xy plane dielectric constant. So coupled features can be affected by anisotropy. And normally, single-ended features such as a transmission line is not. Besides the dielectric constant uh, dispersion and also the anisotropy, there are many other things to consider for test methods. And uh, one of them is the configuration of the test method. And that is, is it a raw materials test using a fixture of some sort, or is it a circuit test where a circuit is evaluated and from circuit performance, the dielectric constant and dissipation factor is extracted. Now, those two different configurations can give you different answers, and the main reason why is because normally, the dielectric constant that's being extracted from a fixture does not have circuit variables, of course, because it's not a circuit. You have variables that impact that DK extraction by the fixture itself. And in the case of evaluating a circuit and extracting the dielectric constant, then of course you do have uh, circuit fabrication variables such as the width of the conductor and the control of that, the copper thickness variation, things like that. So it's really not a good idea generally to compare the test methods that are testing a raw material as compared to testing a circuit. Shown here is a uh, quick overview of what I just mentioned, uh, however a little bit more detail and one thing I wanted to point out is with most of the uh, evaluations that are in circuit form where circuit performance will be used to extract the dielectric constant, copper roughness does come into play there and copper roughness will affect the phase velocity and the phase angle as well. 
However, in a fixture test of a raw material, a lot of times the copper roughness is not there at all or it's uh, minimized uh, or the effects are minimized anyway. So that's one big difference between the material test and a circuit test. Shown here is a graph that is testing the same panel with three different test methods. And the panel is a 12 by 18 panel in size that is a 20 mil thick RO4003C laminate. And what we did was first test the copper clad laminate itself using FSR. FSR is full sheet resonance. And we've tested that and you can see the two nodes that we tested here, one zero and two zero. After the testing was done, we sent the copper clad panel out, had circuits made, came back, tested the circuits. And then you can see that we tested a ring resonator at one gigahertz and another ring resonator at five gigahertz. And you can see we get different numbers there. And then finally, the thick blue line is the dielectric constant versus frequency curve for microstrip transmission lines, which is using transmission reflection techniques. And the ring resonator is using a resonator technique and the FSR using a resonator technique. Now, some of the things to think about with this graph is, one, you can see that the uh, dielectric dispersion is shown with all three test methods. So FSR10 at lower frequency has a higher dielectric constant than FSR at higher frequency. So increased frequency, lower decay. You can see that same trend with the one gigahertz ring resonator and the five gigahertz ring resonator. And it's very obvious with the dark uh, blue line there that is the microstrip transmission lines as you increase frequency, the dielectric constant is decreased. And that is all normal for dielectric uh, dispersion. When comparing data sheets or doing evaluations comparing different materials, it's good to understand the test methods and knowing if you're using more than one test method, knowing the differences of those test methods are very important. And there's really four things that you should think about when you're doing evaluation or if you're comparing data sheets. You wanna make sure that the test methods are really giving you information that's apples to apples. So first off, uh, you wanna make sure that the configuration is the same. And what I mean by that is a raw material test or is a circuit test. So the configuration of the testing should be the same. Also, you want to think about anisotropy. And some test methods will test the XY plane and not the Z axis, and other test methods would do the opposite, test the Z axis, not the XY plane. So you want to make sure that the test methods are testing the material in the same uh, orientation. And then also there is a resonator versus transmission line reflection test methods. A resonator will exercise the dielectric material differently than a transmission reflection technique. And because of that, you can get differences. Again, you would not want to compare results from these two different test methods. And then finally, there is frequency uh, dependency in the way of dielectric dispersion. There should be a difference in dielectric constant as you change frequency. So if you test the same material at two gigahertz, test it again at 10 gigahertz, you should get two different answers. So understanding these differences and uh, also making sure that the test methods do correlate well to each other is very important when you're comparing data sheets and uh, evaluating materials. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.